verse 9 to 10. How I love the word of God. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 9 to 10. Let's start from Matthew 11. Mm, all right. Thank you, Lord. Matthew 11, verse 28 to 29. Matthew 11, verse 28 to 29. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. Not I will give you money. Not I will give you a car. Not I will give you a house. Not I will give you children. I will give you rest. Mm -hmm. Take my yoke upon you. And learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find the rest for your souls. The real rest is the rest of the soul. Right? We're coming together on this. Just patient with us. Mm. And you'll find rest for your souls. The real trouble is the troubling of the soul. The real challenge is the challenge of the soul. Whew. Now, let me read from... The Amplified Translation is going to help me as I navigate on this in a short while. The Amplified, Matthew 11, 28 to 29. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavily burdened by religious ritual that provides no peace. I will give you rest, refreshing your souls with salvation. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, following me as my disciple. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest, renewal, blessed quiet for your souls. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 9 to 10. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 9 to 10. I read from the New Living Translation. It says, so there is a special rest still waiting for the people of God. A special rest. There is a rest. There is a rest. For all who have entered into God's rest have rested from their labors just as God did after creating the world. There is rest. There is rest. There is rest. There is rest. Now, at the core, at the core, at the foundation of the promise of the Father is rest. Is rest. Everything we will need is in rest. We are saved to rest. We are saved to rest in him. We are saved to experience the rest that the sacrifice of Jesus has made available. If you put it in a very simple way, I have been saved to rest. The message of Jesus is the message of rest. The message of Jesus is not the message of a car. It's not the message of a house. It's not the message of a husband. <clears throat> the message of Jesus is the message of rest. It is our promise in him. It is his promise to us, the message of rest. And Jesus made it clear, abundantly so, that rest is possible and rest is available in him. He showed us also by his word how to assess rest. Now, please understand this. The kind of rest that Jesus is talking about and the kind of rest we are preaching about this day is not the rest that comes from material things. It is absolutely shallow, all right? Okay, someone says there is, there is a sound in the background. Okay, I don't think so. Is anybody getting a sound in the background? Is anyone getting a sound? Um, um, Okay, somebody said, no, so you that had this sound, check your background. Okay, back to rest. Okay, <laughs> hallelujah, back to rest. Thank you, Sister Dindley. God bless you. Thank you, 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 thank you. Hmm. The rest that Jesus is talking about, the rest that the Father is talking about is not the rest that comes from material things. It is not the rest. It is absolutely shallow. If we find rest in material things, if you find rest in money, you've not found rest. That is why he said, I will give rest to your soul, not just your body, your soul. The real rest he's talking about is not the one that comes from material things. It is not what money can buy. It is what the truth makes available, not what money makes available. What the truth makes available is the rest he's talking about because you can be materially rich, 
We can be materially sorted and still don't have rest. Many of the people who are enjoying material wealth today don't have rest. Many cannot sleep without the help of substances. Many cannot be composed, calm and focused without the help of some, some, some support or some substance. Many today materially rich, they are subject to all kinds of therapies. They are subject to all kinds of therapies outside of Christ. Many are dependent on substance. They've got to see to the psychologist every other day, every other week, just to have clarity. It is a rest that uh, 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 God is promising us in Christ, not subject to material things. There is a rest in Christ. There is rest in Christ. So when we speak about rest, he's not speaking about all your material needs being sorted. Jesus said, come to me and I'll give you rest. The rest is in me, not in money. The rest is in me, not in a car. The rest is in me, not in material things. You can be married with all the children surrounding your table and still not have rest. Still not have rest. And you can be single, no husband yet, no wife yet, and you're working in rest. So it's not subject to things. It is subject to truth. It is not subject to things. It is subject to truth. It's not subject to things. It's subject to an understanding. Now, listen. The umbrella promise, uh, that's the right word I can use now. The, um, the cover, the cover promise, the umbrella promise of Jesus to us is rest. He said, come to me and I will give you rest. Everything else will proceed from the place of rest in Christ. Everything else and everything that God brings up will be maintained, will be sustained from the place of rest in Christ. Jesus said, now follow me patiently on this now. Jesus said, take my yoke upon you. Take my yoke upon you. When you read that, you, 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 you possibly will wonder, what is it talking about yoke? He said, take my yoke upon you. Take my yoke upon you. Now look at this. Back in the days, the Jews, they saw the law as a yoke. They saw the law as a yoke. They were focused on doing things. They had to do things to feel pure. They had to do things to feel right. They had to do things to feel okay with God. You know, they were focused on doing. They were focused on doing. And Jesus said, I understand the yoke you've been focused on now. Take my yoke. And let me tell you what my yoke is. The next word, the next sentence explains this. He said, learn of me. My yoke is my teaching. Learn of me. Learn of me. This is how rest will come. Learn of me. Discover my ways. Learn of me. I'm redirecting your thinking. Just learn learn of me, focus on knowing me. This is how rest will come. Now, let me give you a reference scripture to this now. Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 16. I'll read from the Amplified. Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 16. So you understand what we're talking about, learning of Christ and coming to rest. Jeremiah 6 verse 16. See what it says. Thus says the Lord, stand by the roads and look. Ask for the ancient paths where the good way is. Then walk in it. And you will find the rest for your souls. Where the good part is, follow it, walk in it, and you will find the rest for your souls. So Jesus was clear that accepting him, embracing him, is the pathway to rest. But now let's, let's give an understanding to this now. What is rest? Now let's give an understanding. Rest in Christ is the outcome of accepting the truth. Rest in Christ, not being deceived by lies. Now, accepting the truth. Rest in Christ is the outcome of accepting the truth. Rest in Christ is the outcome of the right focus on Christ. Rest in Christ is the outcome, is a product. You enter into rest when you accept the truth. You enter into rest when you have the right focus on Christ. What is rest in Christ? Rest in Christ is the outcome of accepting that a debt that you owed was paid for you already. A debt that you owed has been paid, has been paid. You are not a debtor. You don't live like a debtor. You live with this understanding now. Rest 
in Christ is the outcome of knowing that God is not angry with you. You don't carry guilt everywhere. You don't kneel down to pray. Guilt surrounds you. Rest in Christ. It's an outcome of knowing that God is not angry with you. You live life knowing this. God is not angry with me at all. God is pleased with me. God is not angry with me. What is rest in Christ? Rest in Christ is the outcome of knowing and accepting, knowing and accepting that the devil is not in charge of any part of your life. The devil is not in charge of anything that concerns you. Rest in Christ is the outcome of knowing. It's, the, it's an outcome. It's an outcome. It's an outcome. You come to this based on certain things, based on certain realities. Rest in Christ is the outcome of knowing that all powers have been given to you. You live your life like this. You live with this understanding. You live with this focus. I have power. I am not powerless. Power over all things. I cannot be held down by a depression. I cannot be held down by negativity because all powers, when Jesus said in Luke chapter 10, verse 19, all powers, he meant all powers. You can't keep creating excuses for depression. You can't keep creating excuses for failure. You can't keep creating excuses for rejection. He said all powers have been given to you, all all you got to believe it now. You see now why I keep emphasizing this: that rest is a product of believing and accepting. Because many of us we have heard about this, we have written it down, but we still don't accept it. You see, when you create excuse to live in negativity, you are rejecting God's truth. When you create an excuse to live a life that God did not promise you, God did not ordain for you, then you are rejecting God's truth. Listen, life happens, business can fail, relationships can fail, a terrible past may have happened, all of this happened, but he said, I've given you power. So you can rise above it by the power of the Holy Ghost. You can rise above it. You can rise above it. We do not justify what happened. Neither must we amplify what happened. Let's focus on what it takes to find rest. Because what you truly need is rest. What you truly need is rest. Coming into God's rest. Coming into God's rest. Now see what the Bible says clearly about God's rest. He said in Hebrews 4 verse 3, We who have believed, we have entered rest. We who have believed, not just arguing, it's not enough to write it down on a notebook. Do you believe it? Do you accept it? If you do, it has to change how you are living going forward. But what is rest? Rest is the outcome of knowing and accepting that all powers have been given to us. Rest is what we come into when we accept what Jesus has done for us. Rest is what we come into it. We come into it when we accept what Jesus has done. We accept it. We come into rest. We come into rest. When we identify, we recognize, we believe, and we accept it, what Jesus has done. We come into rest. What is rest? Rest is a product of living with the assurance that everything we need to win is available in Christ. Rest is living with the assurance that everything we need to win, everything we need, everything we need to win in life, to win in business, to win in career, to win in relationships, to win in marriage, to win in destiny, everything we need to win is available in Christ. Everything I need is in Jesus. But listen to me, child of God. Rest is not the absence of challenges. Rest is not the absence of challenges. But rest is a product of living, living with the assurance of victory. Rest in Christ is not the absence of life's challenges, but it is the assurance of victory. It is the assurance, knowing that God is your life partner. You live like that. God is my life partner. There is nothing I will face that he won't be there with me. There is nothing life will throw at me that he won't be there for me. He is my life partner. He is my life partner. When we think of life partner, what you think of is a man or a woman. No, listen, the first and most important life partner is God. Is God is your life partner. He is with you through everything and in everything. Living with that assurance, that confidence, and that revelation brings rest. 
Put rest. You are not tossed on every side. You do what you can do, and you know he will do what he needs to do. You live without confidence. You live without assurance. Now, so rest is in a truth. Rest is in a truth. We rest 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 in a truth. Now, listen, rest, I want to emphasize this and give clarity to this now. Rest in Christ is not rest from work. Rest in Christ is not a rest from work, but rest in Christ is a rest in work. Rest in Christ is not a rest from challenges. Rest in Christ is a rest in challenges is rest in challenges as we embrace the life of Christ, as we embrace the rest that Christ has promised, we understand that our life is in active partnership with God. Every part of our life is in active partnership with God. So rest is not the absence of challenges, but the assurance of victory. Now, I'll give you a picture of this. It's like a wrestling match. A wrestling match that was pre-planned. The wrestling match was pre-planned. So while everybody's analyzing and saying all kinds of things about the wrestling match, hey, they want to kill that guy. They're going to break his leg. Look at what is happening. For you, there's rest within you. You see things differently from every other person. You know it has been pre-planned. You were there. You understand everything. You know how it will end. You know who the winner is. You know that whatever any person is displaying within the wrestling match, that's not going to be the outcome. Now, you see now, what's happening is that you find rest in everything. You are not troubled by anything. You're just watching. This is what Christ has called us to. Understanding that our victory is not based on anything else. Jesus has guaranteed it. Our victory, our living well in life, it's been pre-planned, everything, because the lamp was slain from the foundation of the, of the world. Even before we came, the provision has been made. So when you find rest in that, you are not afraid about next tomorrow. You are not afraid about next week. It's been pre-planned. No matter how tough the fire is, my victory is settled in God. Listen, believing this and accepting this, Believe in this. So in the face of challenges, you have rest in challenges. You have rest in the challenge. You find rest in the challenge because you know that everything has been sorted by God already. So Hebrews 4 verse 3, it says, we who have believed, we have entered into rest. So we enter into rest by believing. We enter into rest by believing. If you are still struggling to believe that Jesus has done some things for you, Jesus has brought you into realms and dimensions, if you are still struggling, if you are still struggling, if you are still struggling, then you won't enjoy this rest. This rest will not be real to you. He said, we who have believed, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 3, we who have believed, we have entered into rest. So we enter into rest by believing. Rest begins by believing in the right thing. Rest begins by believing in the right thing. Jesus and all that he has done for us, all that he has sacrificed for us, rest comes when we believe in it. Rest comes when we accept it. Rest comes when we focus on it. You see, let me put this clearly now. For someone going through a challenge right now, the real stress in case you get to speak to any person who is skilled in the art of you know, you know, therapy, taking you through a process, helping you find healing, the real stress we face in life is not about the challenges. The real stress is not about the challenges. The real stress is mainly how we see the challenge. The real stress is mainly how we see and how we approach the challenge. Now, for us to start seeing life differently, for us to start seeing challenges differently, the help of God needs to be real to us. The help, the help of God needs to be real. Knowing that God is with me in all things, I am never alone. He said it clear. He said, I will never leave you or forsake you. Now, ability to believe that, accept it by faith and walk in that reality. Brings rest. For we who have believed, we have come into rest. 
we who have lived, we have come into rest. So if we must work in rest, if we must experience rest, something is as important, we must be intentional. The kind of thoughts that is established in us, not thought of failure, not thought of fear. We must be intentional. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 4, Philippians 4 verse 8, Philippians 4 verse 8, now conditioning what we believe, conditioning what we focus on, conditioning how we see challenges, conditioning what we dwell on. Philippians 4 verse 8, he said, keep your thoughts continually fixed, not sometimes, keep your thoughts be intentional about this. Be deliberate. Stay with God's word. Let it not depart from you. You are doing something to yourself. You are programming yourself. I think by Wednesday, by the way, by Wednesday uh, at the midweek recharge, I'm going to be teaching us on how to program yourself effectively. Right? The discipline of programming. I'll teach us on that. Hopefully, the Lord still permits me by Wednesday at the midweek recharge by 6 p.m. So the book of Philippians chapter 4 verse 8 says, Keep your thoughts, the Passion Bible translation, keep your thoughts continually fixed on all that is authentic and real, honorable, admirable, beautiful and respectful, pure and holy, merciful and kind, and fasting your thoughts, fasting your thoughts on every glorious work of God, praising him always. This is how rest comes. Conditioning what you believe. Refusing to believe anything else, it is not Christ. If it's not what Jesus has done, if it's not what Jesus has called you, it's not true, it's not real. Refusing to accept it, refusing to believe it. Okay, now look at this now. Every one of us, man, woman, boy, girl, every one of us, we have something in our heart that we believe will bring rest. There's something, maybe if I, if I just get married now, all of this thing will be over. I will, I will finally have rest. If God can just give me one child, finally, at least I will have rest. Every one of us, every one of us, we have something in our heart that we wrongly, wrongly, falsely believe will bring rest. And many of us, we are not yet enjoying God's rest because we are pursuing something else that is not the pathway to rest. We are not yet enjoying God's rest because we are after something that does not promise rest. Jesus said, follow me, I'll give you rest. Follow me, follow me, and I'll give you rest. You see, the Bible makes it clear to us <clears throat> that anything we pursue above God is an idol. Anything we pursue above Christ Jesus is an idol. It's an idol. It has become an idol in our lives. They may not necessarily be bad things. I'm not talking about going to worship a false image. No. Even good things can become idols. These are things that you are after beyond Christ. You are pursuing them above God. They keep you away from trusting God. They keep you away from prayer. They keep you away from seeking after the right things. They keep you away from pursuing and pressing deeper in God. It's an idol. It's an idol. True rest comes in Christ. True rest comes by Christ. Focus on him. Follow me and I will give you rest. Follow me. Follow me and I'll give you rest. Now you see, as we talk about rest, <clears throat> It is beyond having a rested body. Yeah, that's why I had to emphasize what the Bible says in Matthew 11, verse 28, I think 29 also, when it said, I will give rest to your soul. So when we're talking about rest, it's beyond having a rested body. While having a rested body is beautiful, has got its own benefit. The rest that Jesus is promising us is beyond rest of the body. It is rest for the soul. Rest for the soul. Even our soul needs rest. That's why it was clear that Matthew 11 is now will give rest to your soul. Now, you see, your real identity is your soul. Your real personality is your soul. Listen, it doesn't matter what you wear on your body. It doesn't matter what drives you from place to place. The state of your soul is your real state. The state, the condition of your soul. Live in a mansion, drive all kinds of cars according to the days of the week. Well, all kinds of things. The state of your soul. That's why you find people, they've got all kinds of things. They live in the best of houses, but there is still no rest. 
there is still no rest. There is still no rest. That's why Jesus said, what I have come to give is rest for your soul. Rest for your soul. Now, please listen to me now as I bring this together. Our soul is in three dimensions and functions. The soul, your soul, my soul is in three dimensions and functions. First, the soul, the a dimension of the soul is the mind. A dimension of the soul, a dimension of the soul is the mind. Another dimension of the soul is our emotions. A third dimension of the soul is our will. Now, see how it works now. With your mind, you think. Don't forget we said the mind, the emotions, and the will. With your mind, you think. With your emotions, you feel. With your will, you choose. You see this now. With your mind, you think. That's why Jesus wants to bring healing for the soul. It will change everything. It will change everything. With your mind, you think. With your emotions, you feel. You feel. Many of us need healing there. With your will, you choose. But you see how it works now. If you do not get rest in your soul, you can get tired in all of these areas. Many of us, we are tired. That's a fact. You are really tired. You need rest. You need rest. You are tired in these areas. You know, you are living a life of shame. You know, that consciousness of shame. You are living in fear. You are living, you know, with this sense of God is angry with me. You are trying to do things to please God. You are trying to, to do all kinds of things just to feel right. You are working with the lies that people have forced on you. The lies people have given you as conditioned in a strange way. And Jesus is saying, you need rest. You need rest. Come to me. I'll give you rest. Rest in your mind, rest in your emotions, and rest in your will. Now, the Bible shows us something there. According to Hebrews chapter 4, you know, I think we read verse 9. I think we also read verse 3. But according to Hebrews chapter 4, the Bible showed us how the children of Israel, they won that for 40 years, no rest. They did not find the rest that God promised them. They were wondering, wondering. That's how many of us, we are wondering, wondering. Now, your emotions are wondering. Your will wandering, not stable. Your mind is wandering, not stable. We are wandering. Israel wandered for 40 years. And when you study the Bible, that Hebrews chapter 4, he showed us the only reason they were wandering, unbelief. Unbelief. Refusing to believe and accept what God has said. Many of us, we are not enjoying rest at all. You are struggling to believe and accept. You are struggling to embrace this work of faith. You are struggling. It's not real to you. So you are not enjoying rest. You are battling with a thousand emotions. You are so attached to the wrong things. Your focus is wrong. Your appetite is wrong. Everything is just wrong. Not because you are wrong, but because you are refusing to believe. For we that believe have entered into rest. We that believe what Jesus has done. We that believe that the help of God is available. We that believe in the grace of God. We that believe in the new identity that Christ has given to us. We have entered into rest. We have entered into rest. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 9 down to 11. He said there's a special rest of the people of God. There's a special rest. So how do we enter into God's rest? Belief. Through our complete faith, our complete trust, our complete faith in the Lord Jesus and all that he has done. He knew you go through certain things. He made provision already. He knew life will present its curse. He made provisions already. He knew you face some terrible seasons of your life. He made provisions already. How do we come into rest? Through our complete faith. We just lean on him. We just abandon him. You know what it means to just rest on the dead? When you fall on your mattress, what you do, you lean on it. That's what he's calling us to do. Rest, rest, rest. Just, just lean on me. Rest, rest, rest. Our complete faith, our complete trust. Now you see, Look at this. Uh, practical example. When you fall on your bed, how come you are able to just lay on that bed? You don't put one leg on the floor to say, hey, I don't trust this bed. No. You just lay. You trust. And because you trust that bed, you find rest on that bed. Because you trust, you just, you just rest. You just rest. Because you trust that mattress. You just, you just, you just, you abandon yourself to it. That's what he's calling us to do. 
Abandon yourself for me. Find rest in me. Abandon yourself. That's where rest will come. Stop trying to doubt what I've said. Stop trying to justify pain. Stop trying to excuse certain things to continue in your life. And maybe this is because I have a problem. Maybe something is wrong with me. Come out of that. Find rest in me. Find rest in me. Find rest in me. Find rest in me. He has finished everything that we need. All we have to do is to walk in it. Walk in it. Walk in it. Now, please, let me give us perspective to this. I, I, as I go to study a couple of scriptures, I, I felt the need to give us perspective to this. Now, understanding deeply what Jesus has done brings us to a life of rest. Understanding deeply what Jesus has done done bring us to a life of rest understanding deeply let me give you perspective to this now number one what has jesus done that i should find rest in number one jesus has made you acceptable to god please when i say you put me there jesus has made me acceptable to god he has made me acceptable second corinthians 5 verse 21 for god made christ who never sinned to be the offering for our sin so that we could be made right with God through Christ. Jesus has made me acceptable and presentable to God. I can appear before him at any time. I do not allow myself to be closed with guilt. He is my father. He is my father. Jesus has made us acceptable to God. The second thing, what has Jesus done? That's that I should believe and brings me into rest. I should believe it. I should accept it. And I just find rest. Number two, Jesus has forgiven you all your sins. Nothing can hold you back anymore. He has forgiven you. The day you come to this understanding and you just respond to the love of God. That's it. What is repentance? Responding to God's love. There's nothing you have to do, sir. Calm down. There's nothing you have to do. There's nothing you have to pay for. Just respond back to the love. That's repentance. And how do you respond? Turning away from the old ways and just embracing him. Now, the moment you face him, the moment you acknowledge, oh, this is not right. This is not the life God wants me to live. This is, you are forgiven. You are forgiven. The moment you acknowledge, there's nothing, nothing big about this, nothing complicated about this. The moment you recognize that this is not right, God wants better for me. Lord, I respond to your love. Oh, I respond to your love. Such amazing love stretch out to me. I feel your love. I have been preserved because you love me. I am still here. I have not lost my mind because you love me. Therefore, I have chosen to respond to your love from today. Listen, it closes the old chapter. Jesus has forgiven us. Nothing can hold you back anymore. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7. Ephesians 1 verse 7, he is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and forgave our sins. Forgave our sins. My sins are forgiven. All I have to do, I focus on the Father. I keep enjoying Jesus. Number three, what has Jesus done? that I should just believe and accept. And it brings me into rest. Don't forget, rest is the umbrella promise. He did say, come to me, I'll give you a husband. Come to me, I'll give you a car. Come to me, I'll give you rest. When we find the rest in him, everything else will come. Everything else will come. When you are still troubled in your will, troubled in your mind, troubled in your emotions, you are not yet in God's rest. You will be struggling to find rest by effort. You will be struggling to attain rest by labor. You will be struggling, doing everything to find rest. You are trying to do this so rest can come. Try, now, he said, come to me. I will give you rest. Rest is in me. I will give you rest. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, what has Jesus done that we should find rest in? Number three, Jesus has made us seated in heavenly places. In the spirit realm, we are seated in heavenly places. In the spirit realm, far above principalities and power. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6, and he raised us up together with him. When we believed, he raised us up together with him. When we believed, and seated us with him in the heavenly places because we are in Christ Jesus. I am seated far above principalities and power. I'm not where they can reach. 
every attempt of hell and reply it with authority in the name of the Lord Jesus. I do not negotiate with the devil. I am seated far above. I operate from a position of power. I operate from where Christ has placed me. I am not trying to end it. I am not trying to do things to get there. Jesus has brought me there when I believed. He has brought me there as many as received in John 1 verse 12. To them gave he power, does an elevation, to become sons of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What has Jesus done that I should believe and accept and find rest in? Number, number, number four, because of Jesus, God will never be angry with you. Okay. It's difficult to swallow that. Yes, sir. Because of Jesus, God will never be angry with you. Now, you are sons and friends of the Father now. Because of Jesus, I'll show you perspective with this now. Because of what Jesus has done, God will never be angry with you. Let's get to God's word. In Romans chapter 5, verse 9, the Passion Bible, he said, and there's still so much more to say of his unfailing, unfailing love for us. For through the blood, we have heard the powerful declaration, you are now righteous in my sight. And because of the sacrifice of Jesus, you will never experience the wrath of God. Romans 5 verse 9 is the word of God. You stop using your feelings to determine how God loves people. Stop using your eyes of religion to determine how God operates. Go back to God's word. Stop using your eyes of religiosity to want to determine how the love of the Father operates. This is the word of God. And there is still much more to say of his unfailing love, unfailing, unfailing love for us. For through the blood of Jesus, we have heard the powerful declaration through the blood, through the blood. We have heard of the powerful declaration. You are now righteous in my sight. I am righteous in God's sight. And because of the sacrifice of Jesus, you will never experience the wrath of God. So because of the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross, our relationship with God is changed forever. God is no longer angry with you. He is not angry with you. Not angry because of what you did in the past. Stop bringing it up. God is not angry with you. Stop struggling with that feeling. God is not angry with you. Jesus restored the relationship to the Father. So that whatever you did in the past, hear this part now, whatever you did in the past, if you just respond to the love of the Father and you return to him, you are forgiven. Whatever, there's no penalty to say, and for this thing you have done, this sin is very big. You will have to suffer this, suffer this because of that. No, whatever you did in the past, if you just recognize the waiting arms of the Father, you just respond to the love of the Father, you return to him, you are forgiven. The book of Job says, if you return to the Almighty, he will build you up. He will build you up. We see the parable of the prodigal son. Jesus said the kingdom is likened unto this. And we saw that parable that the father was waiting for the prodigal son, the one who wasted money, the one who walked away from the father, the one who went to spend it on riotous living. The father was waiting. God is not angry with you no matter what you did. And I don't want to start explaining things people can do. But I put it in this bracket term. No matter what you did, God is not angry with you. Just respond to his love. He's waiting. The father was waiting for the prodigal son. God is waiting. Just respond. Stop living in torment. Stop living in torment. Stop killing yourself slowly. That's the voice of the devil killing you slowly. God is not angry with you. If you respond to his love, you return to him, you are forgiven. There is rest. There is rest. And you are forgiving completely, sir. Not that God forgave me some and he left some. No, listen, the mercy of God is too rich. It does not leave anything out. The mercy of God is so rich. It does not leave anything out. When you are forgiven, you are completely forgiven. Who the son sets free, he is free indeed. Praise the name of the Lord. So please embrace your relationship with Jesus, knowing that he has paid for your errors. Embrace relationship with God. Just, just, just rest in this. Now, I gave you the, the, the analogy of the, of the mattress. Just rest in this. God is not angry with you. I need to let somebody know that now. God is not angry with you. Stop living with this guilt from place to place, month to month, year to year. God is not angry with you. Don't let your emotions convince you and confuse you that God is angry with you. 
You are not trying to do things. Maybe if I do this, God will be happy with me. Live in the freedom that Christ has brought to you. God is not angry with you, no matter what you did. No matter what you did. And listen, it doesn't matter if you are still living in sin right now. It does not matter if you are still living in sin right now. All you have to do today as you hear me, just respond to the love of the Father. Because many a time, what makes people continue in sin is not because they don't know it is wrong, but they just believe they are irredeemable. They just believe they've gone too far. Listen to me. The Father is waiting. He's waiting for you. Just respond. I know you love me. I know you love me. I have looked away from your love. I have downplayed the power of your love. Your love is able to keep me from falling going forward. Your love is able to sustain me. Your love is able to keep me. You will never leave me nor forsake me. Don't continue in the wrong. Don't continue in darkness because you feel God is angry with you, because you feel God cannot forgive you. The Father is waiting. His arms are open. Just embrace him. Just embrace him. God is not angry with you. All you have to do, my father, I'm here. I'm prodigal. I looked away from your love. No more. No more. I am your child. You are my father. I respond to your love. What has Jesus done? That we should believe and accept and just find rest. Number five, Jesus has made it possible. That no matter how low you fall, you can still return to the father. No matter how low you fall, no matter how low, someone can say, you don't know what I have done. This pastor does not know. Excuse me? No matter how low, Romans chapter 8 verse 1. So now the case is closed. There remains no accusing voice of condemnation against those who are joined in life union with Christ. According to the King James, there is therefore now no condemnation. But this is the Passion Bible, Romans 8, verse 1. This is the word of God, not the word of a man here. He said, now the case is closed. In case you've been worried, I've gone too far. I've gone, to, no, no, listen, the case is closed. There remains no accusing voice. Every voice of accusation is a lie from the peace of hell. There is no voice that stands with authority against those who are now joined in life union with Christ. Jesus has made it possible that no matter how low we fall, we can still return to the Father. Can't you just find rest in this? That's why he said, come to me. I will give you rest. Believe my word. Believe what I have done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Another thing we see that Jesus has done. Hallelujah. I hope you're being blessed this morning. God's word is speaking to you. I hope it's, it's resonating to you. You're getting God's word clear. Now, another thing we see now, Jesus has promised to help us live a life that pleases God. So it's not about you. He has promised to help us to live a life that pleases the Father. He has promised to help us to live a life that pleases the Father. So living a spirit-led life is not up to you. Living a life led by the Spirit, a life in the Spirit, is up to him. It's not up to you, not the do's and the don'ts. Just release yourself to him. Let the Holy Ghost just walk his wonders through you. Jesus has made a promise. He has made a promise. And the promise of God comes with the commitment of God. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. Galatians 2 verse 20. I'm giving you scriptures to back this now. I'm not just here just to manipulate you. No, sir. No, ma'am. I'm giving you God's word. This is God's word for you now. Find rest in him. Find rest in him. Stop living with the condemnation mentality. Find rest in him. Stop allowing the devil make you feel he is in charge of any part of your life. Find rest in him. Galatians 2 verse 20, the Passion Bible. My old identity has been called crucified with Christ and no longer lives. And now the essence of this new life the essence, the essence of this new life is no longer mine. For the anointed one lives his life through me. The anointed one he is living his life through me, through me. We live now in union as one. My new life is empowered by the faith of the Son of God, who loves me so much that he gave himself for me, dispensing his life into mine. So Jesus has promised to help us live a life that honors and pleases the Father. So stop trying to focus on what I don't do. What No, just release yourself to God. 
release yourself to God. He will help you please the Father. He will awaken in you the right appetite, the right desire. Find rest in it. Because what becomes exhausting is the consciousness of do's and don'ts. Do's and don'ts. No, find rest in this light. Hallelujah. And number seven, I give us one more and I'll bring this together. I believe that God is speaking to somebody this morning. There is rest in God. There is rest in God. There is rest. We've been saved to rest. We've been saved to rest. We've been saved to rest. There has to be something about our work with God. We've been saved to rest. Hallelujah. And number seven, another light we ought to embrace so we can just rest. Just rest. Just rest. Number seven, Jesus has given us power over the enemy. Power over the enemy has given us power. So that by his power given to us, we operate in a realm of power. We operate in a realm of authority every day, not some days. Every day. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Luke 10, verse 19. He said, look, I have given you authority over all the power of the enemy. You've got to believe this and accept it. Don't just really believe it. I have power with God. I have power against the enemy. I have power against the enemy. Don't just read it. Believe it. This is where rest comes from. Don't forget what we said. Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4. The Bible says, and Israel wandered from place to place 40 years, not because of anything big, unbelief. You've got to believe this. I have power. No matter the defeat you faced yesterday, you have power. Rise up in dominion and victory, exercising authority again. And making sure as you settle down with God's word, the more the power becomes real to you. As you settle down in the place of prayer, in the place of fellowship with your father, you are not trying to walk for power. No, you are positioning yourself for the experiences. You are strengthening your confidence in this thing the father has made available. You are strengthening your confidence. You are strengthening your focus in this thing the Father has made available. And the more you grow in your relationship with God, the farther, the deeper you go in access. The deeper you go in access. In the experiences of God's power, in the experiences of dominion, in the experiences of authority. But listen, you've got to deal with that unbelief. Praise the name of the Lord. For we have been called into rest. We have been called into rest. Life will cease being frustrating. Life will cease being overwhelming. When we lean on God, rest comes. When we lean on God, rest comes. Life will cease being frustrating. It will cease being overwhelming when we learn to lean on God. Jesus said in John chapter 10, verse 10, I have come that you might have life and have it in abundance. I have come that you might have life. But how do we experience the abundance of life is when we believe him. When we believe him. For we who have believed have come into rest. I am never alone. The Lord is with me. Jesus has paid it all for me. There is nothing else I need to do but just to enjoy what he has done. I just need to walk into what he has worked out. I just need to walk into what Christ has worked out. I just need to walk into what Christ has worked out. There is therefore now no condemnation, no limitation against those who are in Christ Jesus. So dear friends, as I bring this to a close this morning, we have been called to rest. We have no other option. No other option. Rest. A life free of guilt. A life free of helplessness. A life free of doubting about the future. Accepting wrong opinions about your life from people. No, we have been caught to a life of rest. Everything good you desire, we proceed from this consciousness. Everything good. Stop living with condemnation. Stop living as somebody who is trying to please God. Who is trying to make God happy with him, happy with her. Oh, the reason you are going through this, there's something you did against God. Excuse me, sir. Come to the place of rest. Embrace the love of the Father. Respond to the love of the Father. Jesus is saying to you and to me today, come, I will give you rest. That's where rest is. Come, embrace me, I will give you rest. Focus on me, you begin to experience rest. 
keep your thoughts on me. Keep your thoughts, not on your pain, not on your past, not on negativity, not on the devil. Keep your thoughts on me. Let your mind dwell on me. Let your mind dwell. Let your mind dwell. Let your mind dwell on what I have done. Let your mind dwell on what I've made possible. Let your mind dwell on what I have given you. Let your mind dwell on what I have called you, and I'll give you rest. Rest is in Jesus and Jesus alone. I pray that this season you walk in great rest and this will become endless for you. By the light of God's word, you have come into rest. By the light of God's word, you have come into rest. You will no longer be troubled by anything. In the name of Jesus Christ, you begin to see differently from this day, differently. You see from a position of power, a position of authority in the name of Jesus Christ. From a place of rest, you are able to address everything that wants to challenge your rest. You are able to challenge every negative thought, every depressing thought, every fear about the future, every hurt of the past from a place of power, from a place of rest in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, say, I have rest in God. I have rest in God. I am not a captive of wrong emotions. I am not a captive of wrong will. I am not a captive of wrong thinking. I have rest in God. I have rest in God. I have rest in God. I have rest in God in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, precious Father. Thank you, precious Father. Now, we will, I, I want to take us in, in a prayer right now. I feel like the Lord wants to pray this now. Lord, as I pray right now, I am delivered from every lie I have believed and every lie I have accepted lies about you and lies about myself. In the name of Jesus Christ, as I pray now, I am delivered. I am delivered from the lies I have believed, the lies I believed about you, the lies I believed about myself. I am delivered right now. Could you just take that in prayer right now? I am delivered in the name of Jesus Christ. I am delivered, I am delivered from every lie, every lie I believed about myself, Every lie I believe about my God, I am delivered. God is not angry with me. I am delivered. I have power. I have power to address anything. I have power to address anything. Therefore, I rise in this dominion. I am delivered from every lie I have believed about God. Every lie that has been sold to me. Every lie I have been programmed with. I am delivered from every lie. I see myself in a new dimension. I see my God in a new way. I I see my victory in a new way. I see my dominion in a new way. I have rest with God. I am delivered today from every lie I believe about God. However it came, how long it came, I am delivered. I'm delivered. I'm liberated in my soul. I'm liberated in my mind. I believe God differently from today. I see God differently from today. My father is not angry with me. I respond to his love every day. My father is not angry with me. His grace is able to keep me from falling up. I lean on the grace of God. I abandon myself to the grace of God. I lean on the grace of God. I do not think about tomorrow. Tomorrow is in God's hand. I'm not worried about tomorrow. It's in God's hand. I'm not disturbed about tomorrow. It's in God's hand. I find rest in Christ. I find rest in Christ. My tomorrow is assured by the sacrifice of Jesus. I find rest. I find rest. I am not troubled at all. I am not tossed on every side. I find rest in God. I am delivered from every lie I believe about God. I am delivered. Every wrong way I've seen myself. In every way I'm trying to carry what God can carry alone. In any way I'm trying to carry myself and do what God alone should do. I am delivered from such wrong thinking. I am delivered from such wrong imagination. I allow God to be God in my life from today. I allow God to be God in my life. I allow God to do what makes him God. I am delivered. I am delivered from limiting beliefs, from negative opinions. I am delivered. Everything that has imprisoned me, that has shut me out of the rest in Christ, every unbelief, I am delivered. I believe God. I believe God. His glory is upon my life. His power is at work on my life. I believe God in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now you take this in prayer now, just a simple one. From today, I live a life of rest in Christ Jesus. 
from today, I live a life of rest in Christ Jesus. Would you please take that in prayer now? From today, I live a life of rest. I operate from a place of rest. I am not troubled about anything. I am not worried about anything. Jesus has brought me into rest. I live a life of rest. I live a life of rest. I operate from a place of rest. I speak from a place of rest. I face every new day from a place of rest. The rest that is in Christ Jesus. My rest is not dependent on material things. My rest is not dependent on material acquisition. My rest is dependent on the truth. I live a life of rest. Rest in Christ Jesus. Rest in Christ Jesus. Rest in Christ Jesus. I rest in Christ. I rest in Christ. I rest in Christ. I rest in Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, precious Father. Thank you, precious Father. Thank you, precious Father. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Lord, I speak over everyone under the sound of my voice right now. Our eyes are open to the light. We refuse to return back to the struggles of the past. This is a liberating experience for us today. In the name of Jesus, we live a life of rest in Christ. We do not live with the feeling of guilt and condemnation. We do not carry the burden that only God can carry. You told us, cast your burden on me. Cast your worries on me, for I care. This is the position of rest. Therefore, we live this kind of life from today. We place our burdens on you. We place our worries on you. We place our guilt on you. We place our fears on you. And we receive your rest. We respond to the love of the Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, we operate from a position of power. We operate from this day, from a position of power. We are not powerless. We are not slave to sin. We are not slave to condemnation. We do not swim in sin and unbelief. We live righteously through Christ. We live a life that honors God through Christ. We abandon ourselves to God and Jesus helps us please the Father. We receive this new consciousness today. We walk in this revelation today in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, precious Father. A new season is open right now. A new chapter is open right now. A new day begins right now. Freedom in Christ, rest in Christ, liberation in Christ, power in Christ, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for ancestor prayers. For in Jesus' matchless, powerful, excellent name, we have prayed. Now, all of God's children will shout and live in a powerful and glorious amen. I have rest in God. Hallelujah! 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 Glory to the Father. We bless this morning. Did God speak to you at all? Did you get something from this? Did God speak to you? It's a good time to give a lot of mighty hand. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to the Father. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. I have rest to hell with the devil. I'm not a slave to sin. I do not live a life of sin. I live a right, life of righteousness in Christ Jesus. I release myself to him. He helps me. He leads me. He guides me. He leads me. He guides me. I am not a slave to any negative emotion and feeling. I release myself to God. He helps me. He guides me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Hallelujah. We blessed. Hallelujah, hallelujah. What a word from God we've received today. What a word from God we have received today. I believe that this has opened you to a new consciousness. God is not angry with you. Mm -hmm. Wake up, mm -hmm. wake up, wake up. Your father is not angry with you. He's waiting for you every day. Just respond to my love. Respond to my love. I'm not angry with you. It's the devil that wants me to, that wants you to feel I'm angry with you. I paid too much a sacrifice to be angry with you. Eh? <laughs> he gave his only begotten son. What will you do that will make him to be angry with you? What can compare to that sacrifice? He just wants you to respond to my love. Follow me. And listen, the grace of God is not a license to sin. It is empowerment to stay right and live right. That's it. The grace of God is not a license to live in sin. It's an empowerment to live right. Anyone who uses the grace of God as an excuse to sin does not know God, and the truth is not in him. The grace of God is not a license, permission to sin. The grace of God is an empowerment to live right, to live right, to live right, and just enjoy God. 
Just enjoy God. Release yourself so you can fly. <laughs> Just enjoy God. Just enjoy God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. There is rest in God. Okay. I believe that we're blessed by this. Now, quickly now, let me put up our account um, details for offerings and our tithe um, right now for those who are waiting for it. And now you have it. Do it now. You don't do it now. Come after you. See us by your gate. You see. Okay. <laughs> all right. For our tithes, our offerings, all other forms of giving, we're using these details for now. Hopefully, in the next couple of days, it's going to change. In the next couple of months, it's going to change. In the next couple of years, it's going to change. <laughs> but either way, this is what we are using for now. So for our tithe and our offerings and all other forms of sacrificial giving, whatever the Lord lays in your heart, you just want to be a blessing. Please don't eat your tithe. You don't eat the fruit. You also eat the harvest. Look at how it works now. Look at how it works. I'll put it in a better way. For everything the Lord gives you, there is a seed and there is the harvest. The seed is what you send back into the future. All right? We do not give our tithe. I'm not a pastor who preaches that. But if you don't give your tithe, it's a sin. God will condemn you. God, hey, I don't, I don't believe in that. I don't preach that. But there is a blessing in tithing. There is a blessing in obedience when from what the Lord blesses you with, a part of it is released back to his kingdom, to his work, to establish his kingdom on the earth. There is a blessing that comes with it. When a part of what comes to you, you've been able to conquer greed because the major reason many people don't tithe is greed. How can I, from 1,000, I'll give 100, there are going to be left. From 10,000, I'll give 1,000. Ah, God give me a million. I'll just give you 100,000 as tithe. No way. So many of us, we really don't tithe. We give a contribution. You just put something small. And some of you hearing me now, you've not tithed in a long time. What are you fasting on? You're fasting on error, so do what is right. But the Bible says to him that know it to do good and do it did not. It's not a good thing. It's not a good thing. So we do this because we know God. We do this because we love God. We do this because we believe in the blessing of the Lord. Hallelujah. So please make sure, um, I think I need to do mine right now, okay? So I don't just tell you and I do mine after the service, no way. So our tithe, our offerings, we will do it now and honor the Lord with it. Where's my banking app now? What's happening now? Um, okay, an announcement is coming now. Just hold on for me. Where are you? So you just connect it to your banking app. Where is Power to Excel now? Um, recipients. Where are you? Okay, yeah, got it now. Okay. Mm. Okay, let your data not fail you now. If it fails you now, hey. All right, yeah, that's done. Okay, the light is coming. Okay, quickly now. Hallelujah. Once again, thank you to everyone who's joining us um, for this service. You know, ideally, for those who've known me for a while, you know, when I do an online service, at the end of the service, I want to greet everybody. I want to look at your face and greet you. But now I can't do that because I don't know who is here. <laughs> we don't know who is part of the family yet. There are some of you who are attending um, Catholic Church on Monday morning. Anglican Church on Tuesday, Protestant on Wednesday, Dr. Sule's meeting on Thursday. I understand that. <laughs> this is a family you have to be planted. So 